But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitudes because they took him for a prophet. Hey, ladies, when I read this, I have never heard a teaching on it. And I got through with that. And like Laura, I was like, huh? <laughs> when the harvest time approached, he sent his slaves to the vine growers to receive his produce or fruit, right? Mm -hmm. So the fruit, what is that? Was it literal fruit or literal produce? It was his profit. You're the owner mm -hmm. and someone leases it. They do the work. And then he sends these people to collect the profit mm -hmm. that the landowners share. And what did they do? They killed them. And I thought as I was reading this, I was so excited. This is the Holy Spirit because it was accurate. I thought that is just like the prophets of old. Land owner sent the prophets to tell the people the news and what they needed to do. What did they do with the prophets? They killed them all. They were like, we don't want to hear what you have to say. And so what does he do? He sends his son. He says, my son, they will listen to my son. And it that's, and I'm reading, I'm thinking, well, that son, that's Jesus. The father sent the son to be the savior of the world, to speak, to show the world, the father's likeness, and they killed him. That puts it in a whole different perspective. And these religious people did not appreciate hearing this. So anyway, what Jesus is talking about here is the lack of return. And it's dealing with us too, because are we using our gifts? That's what we're going to get into a little bit later. It's not being useful in the body of Christ. And these religious people were not being useful at all. They were taking people down the wrong path. And so just a little bit earlier, he was talking about the fig tree. Verse 18. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. Okay. Jesus was kind of not in a very happy state when he <laughs> saw that. That's where he overturned the tables. And then right after that, he spoke and the fig tree dried up. Well, the fig tree has always, in the Old Testament, always represented what? Israel. Israel. And he is like trying to get them to understand you guys are on the wrong track, trying to pull them back. And all these religious leaders are not appreciating what he's having to say. But, you know, isn't it interesting that 35 years later, after that fig tree withered, what happened? Israel lost its national identity. Found nothing on it except leaves. No fruit. And he said, no longer shall there ever be any fruit from you. So if you think he's saying that to Israel. And sure enough, that's what happened 35 years later. And then in 1948, something else happened. Israel became a nation again. And the world saw that. Some of us were alive at that time. Do you, were you old enough to know what was happening? Only oh thought our pastors told us. Okay. Was there a lot of excitement in the church over that? There was. Right? Really? Yeah, it would be fascinating to see, to be old enough to have seen that and understood what was going yeah. on. Were you too young? You were too young to know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, playing hopscotch. 
yeah. Who cares about Israel? I've got a game to play here. I got to throw this pebble. <laughs> it's kind of like what we're experiencing today, Michelle, because they, they saw something that had been, uh, you know, prophesied that was something that was going to happen in the future. And they, that were, I would imagine there would have been great excitement because they were seeing things in the Bible. Right. The and we're experiencing that today right now also. Yes. Right? So it's yes. exciting to them. Oh, it is. And I don't know what anyone here thinks about this, but there is that verse that says, and I haven't studied it out, so I don't want to teach on it tonight, but it is food for thought where it says this generation that sees Israel come back and be a nation again. How is it worded? Will not pass away. And I've heard different takes on that. And I don't know. I, I, no one knows the day or the hour. But what if that is what that means, that verse? This generation will not pass away. The people that were alive, like Awanda, and saw that, I mean, they would, I think it needs to be those that were, saw it happen. Well, we're going to see Jesus come. I yes, that's yeah. why. And now all this other stuff is falling into place. Yeah. To me, it's like he is at the door oh, wow. because your generation who saw that you guys are getting to be in your 80s, right? Right. 90s. I don't know. How about 85? Uh, 85s? <laughs> <laughs> and so I just, I keep telling Awanda, we're going to go up in the rapture together. Yes, we are. She keeps telling me and I tell her, oh, we'll stand together in church. I'll say, she'll say, I want this song sung at my funeral. <laughs> and I'll say, I want this song sung at my funeral, okay? And this is, we give each other instructions. So whoever goes first. But we're all going in the rapture. Well, that's what I told her. I said, you know what? Awanda, I think we're just wasting our time talking about this. Won't it be fun? It's going to come to pass. I believe it. I believe it too. Well, we just see the writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. He's so close. But getting back to the fruit, you know, that verse in, do I have it here? I don't know. It might come up later. But where it says, we shall know them by their fruit. Jesus wants us to have fruit. He wants us to exhibit that we are his children. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be peculiar people, as it says in the word somewhere. I'm not sure where. But we are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Peculiar is one of the translations. And that means not like the world. And what kind of fruit do we have? And this is how this made me think about it is, Lord, I want my life to bear fruit. Not just as we talked last week, not just in word alone, but in deed. You know, that's what he's called us to do. We shall be known by our fruit. So think about that. Um, we're subject to the same fruit inspector mm -hmm. that these religious people were subject to when he was talking to them. So we go piss, piss, and shame on those people. But then what about me? Do I fit in that category? So Therefore, when the owner of the uh, vineyard comes... What will he do to those vine growers? These religious people said to Jesus, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end and will rent out the vineyard to other vine growers who will pay him the proceeds of the proper seasons. Isn't it interesting? They were so rough and hard on that. The people in that story, not even seeing that they were the ones that Jesus was addressing. They were so blinded to their own sin and their own self-righteousness. May that never be the case with any of us. And like David prayed, Lord, show me if there be any wicked way in me. And he will. And speaking of David, do you remember when the prophet Nathan approached him? about the little lamb 
And we won't go there because of time, but it's if you want to write it down, you can read it later. It's in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 7, where Nathan confronts him. And do you remember what David said? You ought to do it. He's David is speaking about himself, but he doesn't realize it. David is guilty of the same thing that Nathan had just told him through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so that, that answer is found in verse 13, chapter 12, verse 13. And, and that's where Nathan says, because David says, well, you ought to hang him up by his toenails. I don't remember how David said it. <laughs> Something like that, you know, no mercy. And Nathan says, well, it's you. <laughs> oh, they don't humble themselves and repent. But what did King David do? He heard it and he heeded it. And he said, oh, that is me. Father, forgive me. It's a beautiful story. And God looked for fruit from Israel's leadership, but he found little as shown in the fig tree incident. And um, so, yeah, he wants us to bear fruit. And that's what he's trying to get across to them. So. And where, where they say, and lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits in their seasons. The leaders were corrupt. And so transferring the leadership, that's what Jesus was doing, was transferring the leadership from those guys to the apostles at the time. And then eventually to the Jewish and Gentile believers. That clearly must have angered them. They would have railed against him for saying that. Because Jesus said, have you never read the scriptures? <laughs> well, what, do you mean? what do you mean? What are you saying to us? That didn't fly with them. And then in verse 43, therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing the fruit of it. That would be very upsetting for them to hear. Mm -hmm. He warned them that if they continued in their rejection of God, and not only God, but of his Messiah, they could expect that God would pass the leadership of his work on to others. And ladies, what a warning that is to us here in our own country oh. for things that are happening right now. We too are seeing the de deity of Christ being trampled upon mm -hmm. <laughs> with the leadership. Yes, our acting president, um, the leaders, you know, statewide state leaders, and the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, they're scoffing at it. They're mm -hmm. laughing. Um, they are so much more intelligent than we are. <laughs> and they're just, oh, they're there. Yeah, you're one of those, you know, like we're deplorable. We are deplorable. They see us as the enemy. They do. Mm -hmm. they are. Yes. We are the and we are the most peace loving. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what is wrong? But you know, I think of that one verse where it says, God sent them a delusion that they would believe a lie. Because they've passed, they passed the limit. It's like God just says, leave them to their own debauchery. Yeah, right. Wise in their own eyes, right? Yes. Not only that, but his sacred word. They're mocking of God and and it's happening listen to this by those who should be advocates of the word of God pastors there are a lot of pastors that are not teaching God's word who are not teaching God's word for the sake of political correctness. That's why I am so proud of that pastor in Canada who says no. That video was awesome, wasn't it? It was good. It was awesome. 
we're going to meet. You know, it's God. God says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. And render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Render unto, render unto God what is God's. And we're going to be here in this church and you're not stopping us. What gumption that takes. Not every pastor would do that. And not every pastor is doing that. And he went to jail. And we can apply that to America today because we have been a city on a hill. And we have sent missionaries out all over the world. And been the prayer warriors and the, the supporters of missionaries mm -hmm. and you know what it may be taken away from us i mean if america goes down who else is there it will be the great tribulation yes it will Wanda. amen and we won't be here will we Look at verse 44 we should come to him with a broken and contrite spirit To him in repentance, or we will be broken, crushed by him in the judgment. Let's read that again now with that in mind. And whoever falls on the stone will be broken. The stone is Jesus. Yes. Do you want me to finish that? Yes. But on whom, whomever it falls, it will grind him to God. We'll be broken mm -hmm. in repentance, mm -hmm. but we won't be ground to powder. Who's going to be ground to powder? Non-believers. The non-believers. Mm -hmm. When we come willingly, we bow. We bow willingly in repentance, but every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, mm -hmm. whether they want to or not. They That's will. Right. Mm -hmm. They will. And they will be crushed like and powder. They will, yeah. So. Yes. Either be broken now and deal with it and go to him like David did. Father, forgive me. Or be crushed. Oh. That, ladies, is why we need to be out there sharing the word. Amen. That is always say delayed obedience is disobedient. Yeah, and that's really good. That, that sticks in my mind when I think you know, when I, when I feel like God tells me something and I want to put it off for a minute, delayed obedience is disobedience. I really appreciate you both for sharing that too, because exactly I was thinking just what Sherry said. That is such an encouragement to us. And ladies, that's what we're called to do. And the Holy Spirit will lead us to wherever and whomever he wants us to, to talk to. And that obedience is fruit. It is. That is what we're called to do. He's working on us, ladies. And he wants us to be fruit bearers. And how do we bear fruit? Do we work at it? Do we have to, you know, does the apple tree say, Oh, we got to get me some fruit. Oh. The apple tree doesn't do that. It's just an apple tree. And it receives the sunshine, it receives the rain, it sends its roots down into the soil, and it produces apples. And that is what we can do. We can produce fruit by attaching ourselves to the vine. And that's what John 15 is all about. Remain in me, and I will remain in you, for a branch cannot produce fruit. If it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Oh, that's so good. That Isn't one. that good? That so if we want to be fruit bearers, we have to remain in him. And how? What does that mean? How do we remain in him? What? Read your Bible and pray every day. Yes. Every day. Every day. There's another song. Go for it, Alanda. So, yes, it is that connection with him. In the world we're living in today, and I know I'm not the only one this has happened to, I 
sometimes feel overwhelmed. Yeah. I sometimes feel heavy and sorrowful and angry, <laughs> mostly angry. And I will make myself sit down. Even if I have already had my quiet time for the day, it's like I need to refresh my thinking. I need to renew my mind right now, Lord, because I am going down a dark trail in my mind right now. I want to renew that. And I will, it just happened to me last week. I sat right where Sherry is and I started to read again. And it was amazing how it was a physical sensation. It just lifted this spirit of heaviness. He gives me <laughs> beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, a garment of praise, or the spirit of heaviness, that we might be trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. I, it's in Isaiah. He did that sitting right there. He lifted the spirit of heaviness and gave me the oil of joy for mourning. That is being attached to the vine. That's where it comes from. I couldn't want that up myself with all the positive self talk in the world. It's similar, similar to the song where it says, turn your eyes upon Jesus and mm -hmm. his wonderful so. face. Mm -hmm. So what Cheryl, I mean, what Michelle did is she turned her eyes upon Jesus. She went to the word of God because that's how yes. I see what happened. Yes. 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 Things of earth will grow strangely <laughs> dim <laughs> in the light of his glory and grace. If we don't feel him, it doesn't mean he's not there. Right. But it's nice when he lets us yeah. <laughs> have that, and then we get you know? Right. And yes. he's so faithful. Yes, he is. So merciful. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want anybody to perish. Not one. Not one. No. So he's going to go to great length. We need to be fruit bearers. That is what he's put us here to do. You were put here to be a fruit bearer in the kingdom of God. Not only for such a time as this, but not only for the lost, but for one another to build each other up, to stir one another on to, to good works, right? Mm -hmm. We stir each other up. I mean, just hearing Laura's story and Sandra's story tonight, I'm stirred up. <laughs> I'm looking now. It's like, okay, Lord, I don't want them to have all the fun. Give <laughs> me something to do. Um, and, you know, Ephesians 2.10 in closing, let's look at that and see, because we know that we are not saved by good works. We know no. that, but we have the good works as a result of being saved. So Ephesians chapter two, and then we'll be finished to verse 10. Would someone want to read that? For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, hmm. which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. All right. He has prepared us for good work. <laughs> And we need to ask ourselves, Lord, and this is my challenge to you this week. Lord, am I doing the good works, good works that you have prepared me for? Don't let me miss it. Whatever, Amen. whatever it is. And may we just get busy and start serving from our hearts, ladies. Um, not to get anything, but to give our lives away for the kingdom of God. For Jesus Christ, who gave so much for us. So ladies, let's let our lights shine. Mm -hmm. As it says in Matthew 5, 14 through 17. Don't put that light under a bushel, no. <laughs> let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. It's a sale of tonight. Everything is tonight. But then taking us back to the fruit. Um, and you can write this down. John 15, verses 4 through 6. And may we all this week, ladies, go out and receive that life-giving sap. The sap of the tree 
remember I said we were planted, or he said in, in Isaiah, the planting of the Lord. He's planted us. Let's receive that sap. And let's remain in him as we go out and bear much fruit in his world.